<laughs> movie, television, and school passions don't tell you everything about the origin. Charlie goes, uh huh, Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> Historian author Kenneth C. Davis knows the real story. Hello, Kenneth C. Davis. Good morning, Gail. Okay, so Ken, this is the thing. We're taught in school that the pilgrims came to this country in search of religious freedom. You said that that's only half of the story and that not everybody on board the Mayflower the that, pilgrims. That's correct. About half of the passengers on the Mayflower what we, are what we would call pilgrims, the people coming because they were trying to escape the Church of England and persecution. The other half were people coming for the same reason immigrants have come for hundreds of years, opportunity, land, and a, a chance to ha have a, a life in this new world. That's one of the reasons when they got to Provincetown, mm -hmm. they, that's where they landed first, the tip of Cape Cod, they had to decide who was going to be in charge because they were going to go their separate ways, and that's why they sat down and decided to write this thing called the Mayflower Compact, the first real constitution in American history. And they said they were going to rule themselves with uh, a vote. Of course, the women weren't included. How many people uh, who came aboard, uh, how many did you say it was 100? It was about 100 passengers. Yeah. Who, who survived the trip, one child born on the trip named Oceanus. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and when did they begin celebrating Thanksgiving? Well, what we think of as the first Thanksgiving, this is where the legend and the myth gets layered on. October 1621 is the first feast to celebrate a harvest. They didn't call it Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to them would have meant a, a day of prayer and fasting, not what most of us have in mind for this no, Thursday. Not at all. Um, what so, did they serve? Well, uh, they did have turkey, but wild turkey, mm -hmm. not, not the uh, butterball we're talking mm -hmm. about right now. Yeah. But a lot more seafood, obviously. They were camped out next to the Atlantic Ocean. So there was cod. There was eel. Mm. Eel is a great protein. Oh, I love eel, don't you? Uh, no. Isn't it on your menu for Thursday? <laughs> Not even kind of. No, and Squanto, this famous oh, Indian yeah, who too. could speak English, uh -huh. imagine yeah. that, uh -huh. um, taught them how to, how to catch eel also. To Wait, Squanto follow. could speak English? That's right. There were, when the pilgrims arrived in 1620, they are there for a few months, and one day somebody walks into their camp a kind of bedraggled Native American yeah. and speaks English. And he comes back a few days later and, speak, and brings another man named, we call him Squanto, that was probably not his real name mm -hmm. or his native yeah. name. He could speak English. They had met European sailors, English sailors mm -hmm. for many years. This is part of the myth also. Sailors had been up and down these coasts for a long time looking for cod. Right. And Squanto had actually been taken prisoner on board a ship been forced into slavery, first in Spain and later in England, finally gets his way back. It's an extraordinary story, but speaks English perfectly. But Ken, and you have got a lot of myths and misconceptions this morning, including, you know, we always think about what they wear, black clothes, black hats, silver buckles on their shoes. You're saying even that's not true. That's not true, because they, they were simple. You're just here to break myths this morning. Is um, that what you're doing? I'm bursting all those Thanksgiving parade <laughs> well, balloons this morning. The, they wore the simple clothes of English farmers. The picture with the black and the black hats is really an idealized vision of the Puritans who come a little bit later. And that's a kind of 19th century Victorian America idealized vision. They tote their guns and go off to church. That's and that's, that's another thing. Thanksgiving would have meant probably three hours in church. Those mm -hmm. Puritans were festive people. Let me talk about American presence. Seven present Claire lineage back to the Mayflower, correct? Uh, seven or eight, uh, including obviously the John Adamses, Adams, right? uh, John Adams and John Quincy Adams, born in Massachusetts. It's their very uh, near and, descendants. And what's Lincoln's connection to Thanksgiving? Lincoln's connection is that he creates the first Thanksgiving proclam presidential proclamation, placing Thanksgiving on the last Thursday in November. And it had nothing to do with the Puritans or the Pilgrims. He had very little to be yeah. thankful for. And Roosevelt? Roosevelt moved the traditional Thanksgiving date in 1939 because of the Depression. Right. Retailers said, move it up a week. We need more time for shopping. That was happening back then. There was a lot of controversy over it. They called it Franksgiving. There were two Thanksgivings that year. 1941, Congress sets the date as the fourth Thursday in November, which is where it is today. Thanks, Ken. As long as I can eat turkey and wear some pajamas most of the day, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. Thank you. you Black wear pajamas. pajamas on Thanksgiving? I try to, yeah. But this Thanksgiving, guess what? I'll be with you. <laughs> we'll be right here. No pajamas, I promise. His books. You're bringing the turkey, are you? <laughs> yeah. Th that too. His book, Ken's book, by the way, is called Don't Know Much About the American Presidents. It's on sale now. 